friends, and welcome to Little Giant Crafts. My name's Jesse, and today is going to be sort of a continuation from our last episode. When I was making the trees, I realized that with just a little tweaking, you could probably make some really simple fallen logs. So that's what I did. Besides just adding some variety to any forest scene, if you're playing a war game or something and you want to be able to block movement or line of sight, but walls wouldn't really make sense in the jungle context, these logs are big enough that they can serve the same purpose, which could be pretty useful. It's pretty simple, so I don't have much else to say about it. So let's get crafting. Logs. They're like trees, but sideways. Now, I once again messed up the recording of the drawing process for this sketch, so I'll just talk it through really quick. I had three ideas for logs that I wanted to try. One was, you know, just very simple, um, a log on its side. I figured that would be easy. The second idea I wanted to try was a log sort of at an angle, like either as I drew here, it had fallen on a rock or just, you know, a tree trunk that was more curved because obviously not all tree trunks are, you know, perfect, perfectly straight lines. And then the other thing I wanted to try, but I wasn't sure how it would work out. Obviously you can tell from the question mark is a larger log, like one big enough for figures to walk under because I have a large variety of tubes, you know, cans and, and different things saved up. So I thought I could probably make something from one of them. So here I've got a few toilet paper tubes, a M&M Minis container, and a tube of Quaker Oats. Now this is actually uh, not the, the normal big size oatmeal comes in, it's a little smaller, uh, which, which was good because the large oatmeal tub was a little too big. So this one was just right and I thought it would, it was pretty promising. So first I take the M&M Minis tube and Fun fact, if you leave the cap closed on an empty M&M Minis tube, I've held on to this for uh, a few years now, they still smell like chocolate on the inside. Maybe not that crazy, but it always blows my mind. Anyway, I don't need the cap, so I clip that off. And then what I start doing is just cutting like jagged pieces out of the ends. If you picture, um, you know, all the places where the bark breaks, you know, just sort of, you know, make the general like zigzag shape. And once that's done, as I did with the trees, I stuff it full of newspaper. Then I realize how sharp the jagged edges of plastic are. So I take a sander and just smooth them out a little bit. All right, once that's done, I move on to the next tube. I decided to close off the end with duct tape. You could say cut a circle out of cardboard and glue it on or you know wedge it in there, but that seemed like a lot of work, so I decided to just go with cardboard. Once I get that all around, I give another piece just for strength. And then you guessed it, back to stuffing. And then I just cover up the other end the same way. So to get the same broken bark effect with these, you could cut into the tube itself, but then again, like I said, you'd have to say cut out a circle of cardboard to you know, close the hole. And also, you know, it would make the log a little shorter. So what I decided to do instead was extend it by cutting some strips of thin cardboard and wrapping it around the edge and then cutting the, the jagged little shapes out of that cardboard. Now the, the one downside to adding this little piece of cardboard is that it does make sort of a, a bump in the outer surface of the log. So if you're concerned with that, you could, you know, just wrap cardboard around the whole thing to, you know, make it the same width, but I wasn't that worried about it. Then you can see I do the same thing to the other side. For the other two tubes, I decided to use them to try the, the log that's sort of rising up into the air, and I decide to join them together at an angle to achieve that effect. 
I don't often use duct tape in crafting, but I used a lot for this project. <laughs> it just, you know, sometimes a tool works. Then I also decided I wanted the trunk to be uh, sunk into the ground a little bit. I didn't want, you know, the whole thing up. So I cut out a sort of triangle shape on the bottom and it wasn't perfectly straight. So I, I sort of went back and forth, you know, seeing how the shape fit on the ground, trimming it a little bit uh, and just, you know, sort of tweaking it until I, I got it to where I was happy with it. Then I decided to draw some of the zigzag broken bark before cutting it out. So I did that to both ends and then I cut it out again. And with the three logs done, it was time for bases. So I just used chipboard, which like I've said before, I, it's one of my go-tos. It's you know nice and solid, but not too hard that it's you know difficult cutting or anything. So I just cut out a few pieces. I, I basically want to stick to the size of the logs. I don't want you know huge bases. So I just glue them all down with hot glue. And then I realize I've forgotten about the flat base of the M&M's container. So I get another strip of cardboard and do the same process again. Then I am doing the circle cutting and wedging that I talked about before, since I did not close these ends off with duct tape. It wasn't perfect. I ended up, you know, making a, a few circles to sort of cover the whole thing, but it was all right. The whole thing will get covered later with hot glue anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then once those are all glued to the bases, I just cut off the corners around the edges a little bit just to make it look a little more natural since it's going to be, you know, in the forest. And now that one end of the curved tree is closed, I stuff that one with newspaper and again cut out some some pieces of cardboard to close up the hole. Then I just go in and add some hot glue on the insides of all the trunks just to make sure all the the closed edges stay closed just to you know make it a little more firm. Then I just take the hot glue and I make lines of it down the logs. This is the same way I made the bark on the trees in the last episode. The only thing that's a little more challenging is getting the lines where the log meets the base, but also depending on the, the size and shape of your hot glue gun, that might be easier or harder. So you may want to do that before you glue it onto the base. Uh, I wasn't really thinking ahead, so oh well. It wasn't the end of the world. And with that, the logs are just about ready to paint, so I do my usual glue and sand and just give them a little basing. While I let that dry, it's time to move on to the bigger logs. Since the idea for this is to just have sort of a half circle coming up out of the ground, I decide to cut the tube in half and make two logs out of it. Once it's cut in half, it's a little flimsier than I had expected, so I decide to just cover the whole thing in duct tape just to add a little more support and hopefully make it a little stronger. And then I start cutting zigzags into the first end. I only do zigzags on one end of each because the other side has sort of a, a lip which, talking about it now, I'm not sure why I didn't just cut that off, but oh well. Um, I made the zigzags a little less sharp, uh, less drastic, I guess. But again, you know, that's it's all up to your, your preference. And then before I put duct tape on the second one, I remembered that I wanted to have a hole in it because, you know, sometimes big logs have holes in them and also if you're moving figures under it, through it, uh, a hole makes it a little easier to see what's under there. And possibly depending on where you put the hole, you can have people shooting out of it, using it as cover, you know, what have you. And then I cover that one with tape as well. 
When I get to the hole, I just, you know, fold the tape over to the other side. And then once again, I cut the little zigzags into the end of that log. Then, just like I did for the other logs and the trees, I start doing the lines of hot glue to represent the bark. And once I get about halfway done covering this log in hot glue, I remember that I wanted to make the remains of a branch sticking out of it. So I sort of just uh, roll a piece of cardboard into a cone shape and just sort of play around with it and you know cut the edges until it lies flat enough on on the log. And then of course I stuff it with some paper for you know added strength and hot glue it on. Then I go back to making the bark lines, including on the branch that I just attached, but it's simple enough. And I was debating whether or not to put these on a base as well, but I decided to just leave them separate. Because then you can even put them like, you know, on top of other pieces. Whereas if you had a base covering up the bottom, you wouldn't have that versatility. That's all there is to it. Time to paint them. So the paint job for these is really simple. I just use a brown on the sand like I always do, and then a burnt umber for the logs themselves. Before I paint the two big logs, I decide to coat them in Mod Podge, again just hopefully for a little extra strength and stability because, you know, I still wasn't sure how tough they would be in the end. Once the base coats for those are done, I, you know, I just give them a couple coats. Then it's time to dry brush, just like the last episodes. Then I take uh, you know, this, this lighter khaki color and I paint the inside of the, the logs and, and some little you know, tree rings. Now you wanna be careful with the textures here because the hot glue, it's not super raised. So if you brush too heavily, you will get the recesses and it'll ruin the, the dry brushing effect. So just go lightly. You know, as people always say, you can always add more paint later, but it's really hard to take it away if you do too much.
Now at this point, my wife saw what I was working on and said that one of the logs needed a frog on top. So I thought about it for a few minutes and I got out my beads and wouldn't you know it, there was uh, a little deformed silica gel bead that kind of looked like the body and head of a frog. So I glued that onto the log and then I took two smaller beads to represent the legs. And uh, given how simple it is, I'm pretty happy with the shape. Then it was time to add some foliage. So I just started gluing moss on kind of wherever. I liked it in the, the recesses, like between the ground and the log, because I feel like the, the darker spots are, are where it's more likely to come out. I don't actually know if that's true, but whatever. Um, I have some like vines growing over the log, you know, just different places, mix it up. And then I take my grass foliage and I realize since it's kind of two dimensional, it doesn't always make great grass, but it looks really good for moss. So I decide to cover the logs in a pretty healthy dose of moss. Then I decide to add a few mushrooms because I figure, you know, uh, dead, decaying plant life, uh, probably a good breeding ground for fungus. So I just take some, some more beads and glue them like inside the, the lip of the logs. And then I add some little tiny leaves from my leaf uh, hole punch. At this point, I go back in and paint some rings on the inside of the logs. Uh, I tried to get a texture with the hot glue when I was covering it to, you know, sort of making that ring texture with the hot glue. But given the size of it, it all kind of melted together into to one shape, but that's fine. Painting the ring, it gets the same idea across. Now, if there had been a better texture, I would have just dry brushed it, by the way. Then I decide to paint the mushrooms, kind of a, you know, boring khaki color. You can do whatever, you know, just look up pictures of mushrooms. There's many different kinds, but I didn't want them to stick out too much, so. And then I got a dark green for the little froggy. And uh, that's about it. There's, there's really not much to it. So let's see the final result. Hair samples, footprints, definitely on the right track. You know, people think Bigfoot's violent, but he's not. Well, not unless you are. All right, so that's it. I'm really happy with how these turned out. Like the trees, they're pretty easy, so you can you know, get a handful done all at once. For these two bigger logs, they actually didn't come out as solid as I was expecting. They're they're actually pretty flexible. Although I think in the long term, that's just as good for storage and durability. You know, it's more likely to bend than break. But yeah, I, I'm really happy with how they turned out. Uh, if you want to see what else we're up to, or maybe you want to support what we're doing, you can check out the links below. Otherwise, that's it for today. We'll see you next time. As always, stay creative. Stay kind and take care of yourself. Move your arms around a little bit. That's pretty loud. The car? Yeah. Okay, that's sorry. Funny. I'll do the whole grab again. Whoa! There's your mise en scene. Well, I hope you enjoy it.
Did I already say that? I don't even know anymore. <laughs>